The Religion of Richard Dawkins In the beginning, there was nothing. Out of a vacuum devoid of space or time came a random quantum fluctuation. On that first quadrillionth of a second, a helium was formed. It was 10 to the power of 14 times the density of water, many billions of times smaller than a single proton, and 10 to the power of 32 Celsius degrees hot. Dawkins looked at this and saw that it was good. He, however, didn't see that something came out of nothing. Over the second millionth year, the universe expanded at a rapid rate. Formation of hydrogen and helium atoms were initially ionized. However, with concomitant cooling, these atoms attached themselves to electrons, becoming electrically neutral and therefore allowing photons to be seen. The universe becomes transparent. Dawkins looked at this and he saw that it was good. He, however, didn't see that whatever matter is formed from energy, there should also be antimatter formed. The problem is that our universe is almost entirely made of matter with very little antimatter. But don't worry, there must be a particle called the Higgs boson, i.e. the God particle, which also can't be observed, that will mathematically solve that little problem. Over the third billionth year, stars formed due to gravitational collapse. Dawkins saw this, and he saw that it was good. He, however, didn't see that forming order out of random particles requires breaking the second law of thermodynamics. Nothing becomes more ordered in an isolated system of its own accord. But don't worry, that order was balanced by an increasing disorder in something else he can't see or measure. Gravitational disorder. Over the fourth billionth year, there was preponderance of immature population three stars. These stars formed heavier elements from hydrogen and helium. Dawkins saw this, and he saw that it was very good. He, however, didn't see that population three stars have never been observed in even with our most advanced telescopes that look far back into time. In fact, there seems to be a homogeneous population distribution of different age stars throughout space-time. But don't worry, there are computer models that prove the existence of these stars. All that thinking required rest, between the 5th and 7th billionth year, to be exact. Over the 8th billionth year, the Milky Way galaxy began to form. Dawkins saw this, and he saw that it was good. He, however, didn't notice that throughout space-time, galaxies do not seem to have a decreasing maturity the further back in time they are. There are spiral forming, that is, mature galaxies, present even in the distant past. Over the 9th billionth year, our solar system began to form from a nebula, that is a cloud of gas and dust. Richard saw this and he saw that it was very good. However, he didn't notice that our sun defies the laws of angular momentum in that it doesn't spin very much compared to the planets surrounding it. The skaters spin faster with their arms are drawn into their sides, so the sun should spin faster than the outer planets as it forms from the nebula. By the way, the first proponent of the nebula hypothesis was the mystic Emanuel Swedenborg, who proclaimed that this was given to him by men in Jupiter and Saturn. And even computer simulations can't explain the presence of the large gas giants Uranus and Neptune forming so far away from the Sun, not to mention that these gas giants have significant differences, hard to explain given that they were formed in the same way. Over the 10th billionth year, the vestiges of life began on the planet Earth. Richard saw this, and he saw that it was good. However, he missed the fact that the building blocks of even a single cell, proteins, mitochondria, which is the energy house, DNA, the information holder for all the proteins present in the cell, the cell wall for protection of the other components of the cell, just to name a few, would have all had to be fully functional, present in close vicinity, and already designed to interact with the other processes in the cell, and all happen by a mere random chance. Imagine a car, and a cell is way more complicated than a car, coming together by just accident. Over the 11th to 13th billionth year, a single cell organism became a multicellular organism, and on and on, until man finally arrives on the scene all by random chance, all by accident, all by a random fluctuation. This process of continued complex information gain within biological organisms, of course, has never been observed. But don't worry, it must have happened that way. Richard saw all this and became sad, because he eventually realised he was a random accident, present only because of the whim of 
theoretical quantum physics, his sole purpose was as a carrier of DNA and to ridicule anyone who would dare to think otherwise. His life had no meaning other than to indoctrinate others into that meaningless existence. Given that there was no high authority, he was free to do whatever he wanted. However, that was also meaningless, for in the end, those things never satisfied him. That is the religion of Richard Dawkins.